number one, Matt Logan. Matt is your brother. Matt Logan and Matt Joseph. Matt Logan will be joined on the ice by her father, Matt, her brother, Matt, and her sister, Catherine. Maddie has played hockey for only two years, both the Trojans. However, she has been figure skating competitively for 15 years. The most memorable moment happened in one of her first games during warm up. Fellow teammate Danny accidentally tripped her. She stood on her hands and knees across the ice and took the opposing team's model and came to a stop at her coach's feet. Finally, she was able to get out and apologize before skating away. After graduation, then, he likes to go to college with a major in business, computer science, or a combination of the two. And his message to her classroom is, don't take being on a team for granted. We wish Maddie the best of luck in her future endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, this man in Logan.
Another wonderful rendition of the American National Anthem brought to you by Anna Graceman, who sang tonight's National Anthem as we welcome you live inside the historic Hobart Arena in downtown Troy, Ohio. Tonight, the Trojans have their senior night as we welcome you to Troy, Ohio TV's exclusive coverage of high school hockey presented by Team Gear. Of course, the Trojans trying to get back into the winning ways tonight with a win against the Mason Comets from all the way just north of suburban Cincinnati, Ohio. The Comets trailing in the standing so far tonight in the Southwest Ohio High School Hockey League, but starting netminder Nicholas Toradov in number 31 for the Mason Comets will be the test for the Trojans, who have struggled a bit with offense so far this season. As we get set to go, the Trojans having their work cut out for them inside a nicely packed Hobart Arena, home of the Troy Trojans since 1996. And we're glad to have you as we begin our exclusive coverage here of Troy Trojans Hockey, right here on Troy, Ohio TV. And so the Trojans, once pomp and circumstance is out of the way, we will get set for the opening face-off. As the Trojans in their home white uniforms with the scarlet and gray piping, Going from right to left on your screen as we are underway here in period number one. And right off the bat, Cameron Lombardo gets tripped up off the half boards. As the Comets are able to clear this one out to neutral ice. Takes a couple whacks, but they get it deep inside the corner. And a poke checked away by starting netminder Noah Carver for the Trojans. 
as the sophomore getting his start tonight. Second consecutive senior night start for the sophomore netminders. The Trojans will bring this up ice. Sent back inside the Comets end at the tail end of a change as that one's picked up by Joey Brussel in his first shift and suffering a devastating upper body injury in the preseason. He has been out of commission since and making an impact early and often here as we're going to get a stoppage by the official Ty Wilkinson for an offsides call with just about 50 seconds gone here in this opening period, still scoreless from the historic Hobart Arena. If you're just joining us tonight on Troy, Ohio TV, as the faceoff in the neutral zone quickly slapped all the way down, and icing will be the call against the Comets to bring the faceoff all the way back inside the Mason end. And so this will be the real first face-off that Tordov will have to face off against in his own zone as Brady Smith, the freshman, takes the draw for the Trojans and wins it back into the corner cleanly. Where it's scooped up by Cooper Sexton, who posts up into the Dashers. On this low cycle, nearly picked away. Still against the corner as it squeaks free just top of the circle before it's scooped back up by Ian Francis Not who was able to make a valiant effort there to keep it inside before the Comets are able to dump this one deep inside the Trojans' end. 13.38 to go here in this opening period as they'll bring it off the Dashers and a big hit there as the Trojans able to maintain their own line. As Sexton plays it on the half boards left wing side, roughs them up a little bit against the kick plate. As it's post back to the far point, Comets with a drive, loose puck in front, poked away, Carver the save, and he'll hold on. A couple quick whacks right there on Noah Carver, who was able to make the save. To keep this a scoreless affair here with 13-14 to go. And that one's quickly sent back to the slot as the whiff on the first attempt, send it right back down lower to the corner. Off the far side boards. This one's sent out to neutralize as Matty Logan's able to force it ahead. One of three seniors that was presented a senior night accolade before the game tonight as they'll wrap that one around. Off the side of the cage as the puck moves back to the point on the far wing side. Cross ice pass and a one-timer right into the mitt of the goaltender Noah Carver, who will hold on now with 13, or excuse me, 12.37 to go here. And that was really what the Trojans were looking to get, was consistency in front of Noah Carver tonight. And so far, so good. As that one played ahead again to the freshman Brady Smith, who sends it. Ahead for Gavin Burris. He's got Garrity on his wing. Shoots it just wide. Rebound back into the right wing corner as he posts up into the glass. Works it up high on this cycle to the point, but holds on to the puck and keeps it in on side before dumping it deep into the far corner. Out of the trapezoid it comes and right back to the point for Mike McGurk. Team captain fires that one low on the ice. Hit a stick out in front as it's picked back up. And a deflection will knock all the way down inside Trojan territory under a little bit of pressure there as they'll take out the official to the accolades of the crowd in section 29. 11.54 and counting here in this opening period as they'll work it ahead. Back inside the Trojans end. Off the back of the cage. As they'll hold on to the puck. Walks in. Shot wide. Rebound. Out from behind the net as they'll battle for it. The captain comes back in and fires it directly into the bench. And look out, Bruce. I'll tell you what, that brand new hat he's been wearing for the last two weeks won't protect him from that. As he had to do some quick thinking. There on the bench, as there's a redirection and a save by Carver. Rebound off the side of the cage. And they'll work it back into the corner. A couple quick chances for the Comets as the Trojans get away with one there. 
Held on at the line. Right back down low. On this outlet pass to center ice. Fired right back in by the Comets. And icing will be the call now against Mason with 11.05 to go here in this first period. And coming up for the Trojans, quite a number of tests. As the Trojans back in league action on January 29th. Sure to be an exciting hockey game, and we'll have all of those games right here on the new home of Troy Trojans Hockey, Troy, Ohio TV. As they'll play it deep into the corner. Still trying to bang it off the boards. This one, uh, scoots and scores! And just like that, it's a 1-0 hockey game. And it was right off that draw. <clears throat> As you hear Roger Mumpower with the official call downstairs, Cooper Sexton getting credit for the goal. Lombardo getting a helper. And so it's a 1-0 hockey game with 10-21 to go and counting here in this opening period against the Comets as the Trojans getting their pocket picked out through center ice and the Comets will force this one right back inside their zone and back out from around the boards. Into the left wing, off a low cycle behind Carver. They'll work it out before he gets knocked off the puck and we're going to get a delayed penalty coming. And it's going to be a tripping call with 10 minutes even here in this first period. And so the Trojans, it's going to be a kneeing call, excuse me, not tripping. It's going to be a two-minute minor for tripping against Joey Brussel as he gets... No time to get on the score sheet, perhaps not in the best of ways, in the best of Collins. And so the Trojans will kill off their first penalty of the night, presented by Clope, as that one winged all the way down by the captain, Mike McGurk. Under 10 minutes now to go here in this opening period. one nothing Troy early if you're just joining us, thanks to Cooper Sexton's goal. And so the... Comments will be on the first man advantage of the night as they'll work it out in front of the benches and fired right back in by the Trojans. Played aside by Tordoff, and he'll work it into the corner. Right back out from behind the net on this breakout attempt. Trojans still shorthanded for another minute 10 as they'll work it around the Dashers and again. Out in front back from McGurk who's quick to fire it 185 feet the other way free of charge. One minute now to go on that penalty to Joey Brussel, brought to you by Clope, America's favorite garage door. As icing is signaled, icing's going to be waved off as it's played by the Comets deep inside the Trojans' end. Out from behind the net is Sexton. One point already tonight, getting a slash, but maintains possession momentarily as it's blocked out in front of the slot by McGurk, and he's able to fire it all the way down. Brady Smith trying to control, gets his pocket picked, and here comes the Comets back the other way. Eight minutes and 29 seconds to go here in this opening period. one nothing Troy. 24 seconds left on that penalty to Joey Brussel. And the Trojans penalty kill presented by Clope. As this one wrapped around the Dashers on the far side, but the Trojans can't clear as the Comets send it right back to the far point. On this low cycle back down. Eight seconds and counting. On the penalty for the Trojans is that centering feed out in front. Nobody was there. Finally picked it up, but couldn't capitalize on it as the Trojans return to full strength. Even strength hockey, but still in possession of the Comets as they'll send it rink wide back to the far point. Dropped it back out from behind the net and around the Dashers on the near wing. Played it out in front. Loose blocked out in front as 
Carver was able to make the pad save. Right back out from behind the net, and the Trojans struggling to get it out of their own zone. Finally, icing it the length of the ice. And that will bring up an icing call against the Trojans. Now with 7.35 to go, and you could tell the penalty kill unit was just exhausted at the tail end of that shift and had no choice but to send that rink wide to get a fresh set of legs on Rick Zabo's hockey club. And so right off the draw, this one played. By the Trojans as they'll work it back into the corner and off the dashers to the near side for Joey Brussel. A much anticipated add to the roster for head coach Rick Zabo tonight after a lengthy IR stay from that injury. But here's a breakaway now for Gavin Burris on the far side. Cuts to the slot. Delayed penalty coming. And we're going to get a tripping call. And now the Trojans will get a power play of their own. A tripping call now with 7.12 to go here in this first period. They'll put the Trojans on their first power play of the night. Of course, tonight's power play is brought to you by AccuTool Precision Machining. AccuTool, the official sponsor of the Trojans power play. As they'll work it back into the corner. With the man advantage already. One for one on the kill. Let's see how the offensive side goes. As that one kicked down by Berghardt, and he'll fire it right back inside the Comet zone. 6.45 in counting here in this opening period. A one nothing Troy has toward off a save. Rebound back to the left wing side as they'll post it up on the half boards, but coming in deep was the captain. McGurk a shot off the side of the cage, and the rebound will finally clear all the way down and a close call there for the captain, Mike McGurk, doing a little offensive dirty work. And on this power play breakout attempt, now is Ian Francis not. He'll hold on and takes the hit as he'll drop it down to the point. Now for Berghart, for Francis not on the half boards. Still looking for a little help from the other freshmen at the tail end of their shift as Sexton holds on to the puck into the corner, but nobody was in front of the net to intercept that pass. And the Comets forced to ice this one all the way down to Carver, who stops it out from behind the trapezoid and leaves it off for the captain, Mike McGurk. Long stretch pass, no icing called, is racing for it as Lombardo. He'll get to it first behind the net in front of the Zamboni gate before it's picked off, this time by the Comets. Working it back around, still with the loose puck, dangling for it on the half boards. Up to the point, here's a shot from McGurk, shoots and scores! And that power play goal is brought to you in part by AccuTool, Precision Machining, the official sponsor of the Troy Trojans power play. Mike McGurk getting credit for the goal. Mike McGurk the goal. 9.28 is the time of the goal to make this a 2-0 hockey game for the Trojans. And so they'll play it. Back out at the line. No offsides is called, so play continues before it's scooped up by the Comets. Still waiting for that offsides as Burris is able to retreat back to his own line. 2-0 Troy early on senior night against the Mason Comets. If you're just joining us tonight on Troy Ohio TV. Glad to have everybody along for the ride here. As we will have exclusive coverage for the remainder of the Trojans hockey season right here. As well as on-demand replays on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube channels. If you have not liked Troy Ohio TV yet, 
please do so. Lots of fun things coming up. And so that one is going to be an offside call to stop the clock with 5 minutes and 47 seconds to go. And the faceoff's going to remain in the neutral zone directly in front of the visitor's bench in those green uniforms with the black and white striping contrasting the Trojans' classic scarlet and gray motif as they'll work it back into the far side boards. Laid out ahead. At the point, there's a shot up high. That one got a piece of Brady Smith. Uh, Might have got him in the bucket. Seems no worse for wear as he'll race for it out from behind the net. Holds on, wrap around to Tempe and Sexton on the back door but couldn't connect. And here come the Comets the other way with a big hit. Open ice, no call. Francis not taking a big hit of himself as offsides is waved off. That's played by Carver out from behind the net and both clubs will finish wholesale changes. With three minutes and 23 seconds to go here in this opening period, two nothing on the big board above Hobart Arena for the home team as that is going to be a hooking penalty against the Mason Comets with three minutes and 16 seconds to go. As the referee, Ty Wilkinson, giving a nice explanation right there. A hooking penalty will put the Trojans back on the AccuTool Precision Machining Power Play for the second time tonight. Trojans 0 for 1, or excuse me, 1 for 1 on their prior attempts, but the draw wins all the way back inside the Trojans end with a little bit of push there on Berghardt. Play continues as they're working out to center ice. Here's Gavin Burris, head of steam, looks for a backdoor feed, shoots, shoots and scores! I'm not sure anybody knew that was in, except Gavin Burris. He knew it was in. And so just like that, the Trojans, a perfect two for two on the AccuTool Precision Machining Power Play as Gavin Burris gets the goal to make this a 3 nothing hockey game with under three minutes to go in this opening period. And so play continues back inside the other side. As you hear public address announcer Roger Mumpower with the call. Berghardt's going to get credit for an assist, but here's Gavin Burris again, strong arming the puck back into the far side. Inside makes in common territory. Even strength hockey, though, as play continues. Right wing side out on the half boards. Trying on this breakout attempt, but sends it back for Matty Logan. Shoots and scores! A beautiful set pass in the slot by Matty Logan makes this a 4-0 Trojans lead with 2.06 to go in the first period. And a good, solid effort by the senior. As you hear Roger Mumpower announcing Gavin Burris with his second goal tonight, first even strength as the shot right on. Saved by the Comets, rebound, right wing to the near side. Matty Logan picking up an assist on that one, and a beautiful assist it was as play continues out through neutral ice before it's picked up by Cooper Sexton. And the Comets still ice this one all the way down. 90 seconds and counting now here in this opening period. 4 nothing, good guys up on the big board. As a big check. A delayed penalty is coming.
It's going to be a head contact roughing penalty is what is being signaled. And so they're just going to call it incidental head contact, so they're not going to give them an additional minor for it. It's just the roughing call. And so just like that, the Trojans back on the AccuTool power play for the third time tonight, and they are red hot with the man advantage so far this evening. And so... As you hear the official word from Roger Mumpower downstairs, Trojans will control the puck out from behind their own zone. Here's Burse out from behind the trapezoid, sends it back to McGurk on the point. This one right back into the corner centering feed. He had a good idea, but could not connect as Lombardo had the puck on his stick in the slot, but couldn't get that one. To the right destination is a big collision there. Turns it back over. Lombardo a shot. That one's going to be held on. And so fresh legs for both clubs. Stopping the clock with 43.7 seconds here in this first period of action from the historic Hobart Arena. As the Trojans leading 4-0 win the draw right back inside the Mason Comet zone. Now ahead for the freshman. Brady Smith dishes it off at the point. Sends it right back in for Quinn Garrity. Again for Matty Logan. One assist already tonight for Logan. As that one picked back up. Sends it across now for Berghardt. A shot. Low on the ice and he'll hold on. And that one will stop the clock. With 20.9 seconds to go. And that one will be sent all the way down with no icing call. Played back in, 10 seconds and counting here. In this opening period, a big head of steam now for Brady Smith. Cuts the defense all alone through the slot and a pump checked away. As that one right back to the line. And so a very good first period for the Trojans. If you were looking for something for the Trojans to really sink their teeth into in that first period, you have to like the offensive effort, especially on the power play, something we haven't always seen the entire season. And so when we come back, there's still 41 seconds on the Trojans' power play. And so we will step aside when we come back. Second period action from Hobart Arena. Don't go away. Welcome you back inside the historic Hobart Arena. I'm JT Zabo. As second period action underway. That one's going to be 
An icing call against the Trojans to bring that one all the way back. If you're just joining us here on Troy, Ohio TV, a 4-0 Trojans lead in favor of the conference opponent, Mason Comets tonight, two of which on the AccuTool power play. And so the Trojans remain on the man advantage here to start the second period for another 15 seconds. Two for two already on the power play, brought to you by AccuTool Precision Manufacturing. As the Comets struggle out of their own zone, we'll bring that one around off the half boards, and we return to even strength hockey as out of the box they come. Trying to poke it free out of the slot. They'll poke it again on the half boards, and a high shot off the bucket up front as Garrity had that one. Unfortunately, it was the wrong bucket he was aimed for. And so play continues. Out of the corner, centering feed, loose puck. Just trying to get a piece of it. Garrity shot wide. Rebound back for Gavin Burris. A pair of lamp lighters already on the evening. As Burris sends it out to the slot, nobody was there, but finally fired right back in by the Trojans as play continues. Captain Mike McGurk can't hold the line. And neither can Cooper Sexton, but play continues on side as that one fired just wide of the net. 13-29 to go here in the second period as play continues on the far side, catches the Trojans on a line change, and they'll fire that one right back in and tag up at the line and continue pressuring inside the Comets end. Fast and furious here to start this second period. 4 nothing deficit, though. In favor of the Trojans, as here's the centering feed out in front of Noah Carver, picked off. And here comes Ian Francis, not throws on the brakes. In to help out. Back for Lombardo. Again, into the corner, looks for a pass into the slot. Nobody was there as Sexton had his pocket picked at the last moment. And the Comets will carry it out to neutralize themselves across the red stripe, now too wide before it's knocked away by the Trojans momentarily, but that catches the Comets on a line change, and right back in they go. With 12 minutes and change here in this second period, out to center ice, and a big hit on Sexton, but he's able to fire that one deep inside the Comets' end. And everybody has a moment to just breathe. Fresh lines out for both clubs, and now on this breakout attempt for the Comets. Out through center ice, offside signaled. They're going to have to tag up at the Trojans' line and continue pressure, but they're going to decide to finish their defensive line change anyway as the Trojans signal this one for an icing call. And icing is the call. And the faceoff will come all the way back inside the Trojans' and Really like to... Thank everybody for tuning in tonight on our debut here on Troy, Ohio TV. Gracious enough to televise the remaining Troy Trojans hockey games here at Hobart Arena. Also like to thank some people watching at home. Ron Chisley, like to thank you for tuning in from North Royalton. We appreciate everybody enjoying the great sport of hockey here in Ohio as this one played again by the Trojans inside the Comet 10. Centering feed alone and a pad save as that one kicks out big into the half boards right wing side before they'll force it right back hit through the legs of Gabby Paff and here comes a three on two the other way for the Comets across the line and on side. Top of the circle hit off a skate knocked down in midair by the Trojans as Francis Knott was able to hold on and now here they come out to center ice off a bouncing puck. Must be humid down there as we're noticing the puck is bouncing a tremendous amount, despite, of course, always being nice and chilled before the game. 11.04 to go, almost looked like a jump ball back into the corner, but that's the wrong sport as that one tried to pick the corner from Lombardo, makes it back, and nearly too many men as that one went right into head coach Rick Zabo, who's manning the gate. He seems to be okay. But a fast and furious moment there on that line change. Trojans getting away with a too many men on the ice call. As they'll work it up against the Dashers and finally cleared all the way down. And so that one is going to be all the way down. 
With 10.32 to go here in this second period, it's a 4-0 lead for the Trojans against the Mason Comets. I also like to thank Lee Woolery from Speedshot Photography, the official photographer of Troy High School Athletics, for being on hand tonight and risking life and limb in the penalty box to get some world-class shots, especially for senior night, as there's a shot high off the end boards. Rebound, side of the cage, shoots and scores! And just like that, a 5-0 Trojan lead. We'll go downstairs for the official word from Roger Mumpower. And so play continues. We'll wait for the official word. Andrew Condy hands it off now for Sexton. Can't hold on to it. Ian Francis not getting credit for the goal. Cameron Lombardo getting a helper as well. And so the Trojans. Firmly in control of this one already as we inch our way closer to the halfway mark of senior night here. 9.30 to go and counting in regulation. We'll dump this one deep inside the Mason zone. Out from behind the net. Even strength hockey. As they'll play it ahead, Comet's trying to control. Sends it rink wide as Condi is able to force that one right back in and chase. Nine minutes and eight seconds to go. I'd also like to thank our friend Susan Sexton from watching from Lake Village, Arkansas. A little Razorback on our stream tonight here in Troy, Ohio. Glad to have everybody along for Senior Night, honoring our three senior athletes. As the Comets, deep inside the Trojan zone, stopped by Noah Carver, and they'll work that one back into the corner as Quinn Garrity works it up to the Nashers. Still trying to hold on to the puck. Comets can't hold on to their line. And Gavin Burris looking for that third. Holds on. Dances around top of the slot. Still under pressure. Hands it off for Garrity. One football player to another. As they'll work it back on the far side half boards before it's stripped away by the Comets. And out they come to center ice three wide and across the Trojans line. Off the short glass. Stays in play as play continues all the way back. And so play continues. Out through neutral ice for the Comets. Chips it deep inside the Mason zone. Back to get it is Brady Smith. Holds onto it and curls it around. Tries to force it off the Dashers. Takes the hip and gets it deep. And again, Trojans. We got some roughhousing going on here as it was Joey Brussel retaliating against number four. Number four had that late hit, but it will be Joey Brussel that's going to get the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. And so it's head coach Rick Zabo that's having a discussion with Ty Wilkinson down at the bench. 
This all happened long after the play. And so the argument there is the Comet should have also got one for the initial, but that's not what's going to happen. And so the Trojans are going to be shorthanded. That unsportsmanlike penalty to Joey Brussel is the lone call throughout that entire incident there as offsides is going to be the call. And so this penalty kill brought to you by Clope, America's favorite garage door. And so the Trojans trying to maintain that five-goal lead and try to stay out of the penalty box in the same token, especially after the play. But what's done is done as play continues now with a head of steam as Cameron Lombardo with a breakaway backhander tried to go side and knocks the net off the moorings. And so just like that, we'll stop the clock with just under seven minutes now to go here in this second period. And so 1-12 to go on that penalty to Joey Brussel and the penalty kill brought to you by Clope. And so right off the draw, this one forced out by the Comets inside the Trojans end before it's picked back up by Mason at their own blue line as they'll regroup on this power play with one minute remaining. Six minutes and 45 seconds to go here in the second period. Five nothing, Trojans in the lead and they are taking a very offensive stance here in this penalty kill brought to you by Klopek. As they'll work it deep inside the Troy zone around the Dashers on the far side boards. Pressure from the freshman Brady Smith. Having a breakout season so far, as is Sexton. And Ian Francis Knott, who also picked up a point tonight as part of this 5-0 offensive explosion for the Trojans. Under 30 seconds now to go on this penalty kill. Right back, top of the circle, right wing side. He had the right idea and had the net open. Couldn't pull the trigger as they'll work it back on the half boards. Holding on to the puck, and this one's going to be slapped out by Garrity all the way down 185 feet the other way. Of course, Hobart Arena, not regulation size, only 185 feet from board to board. And so that makes that short neutral zone payoff in times like that as Lombardo is shot, save made, rebound, back on the redirection in front of the net, through the wickets, and this one all the way back out through center ice, the other way, two on two, a shot wide of the net. Off the end boards, now for Joey Brussel, right out of the penalty box as we return to even strength hockey. Five minutes and 29 seconds to go. And again, deep into the left wing side. Holding on to it before this one squeaks all the way down. No icing signal as Lombardo holds on to it. One-handed drop pass, shoots, and that one saved. And a good effort right there. That drop pass, you can tell they've practiced that one in practice. And so with five minutes and nine seconds to go here in this second period. That one held on to at the point. There's a shot by Berghart. Loose puck on the side of the cage. Out from behind the trapezoid is the freshman. Sexton. Tries to set up Francis Knott, but had his pocket picked, and here come the Comets back out to center ice. Regrouping off sides is the call. And so off sides is the explanation from Ty Wilkinson with 4.46 to go here in this second period. And the faceoff will remain in the neutral zone opposite of head coach Rick Zabo's bench. As down in his feet was Jack Crawford. Didn't know where the puck was and kept spinning. Loose puck knocked away by Matty Logan as that one's going to be fired 
Up and out of play. And so the And the face-off inside the Trojan's end. One cleanly back to Crawford out of his own corner. Poked away in front of the net by Noah Carver, and the foot race now ensues. Here's Gavin Burris with a breakaway, looking for the hat trick. Shoots and scores! And Burris gets the hat trick. Four minutes and 19 seconds to go in this second period. Hat trick for Burris. An even strength goal makes this a 6 nothing hockey game for the Trojans. Maddie Logan gets credit for the assist. Her second point of the night is offsides waved off at the last second as the Comets will force this one deep inside the Trojan zone. Wrapped around the boards again on the right wing side. Here's a long race for the puck with Lombardo deep into the corner and a big collision against the glass. Now for Gabby Paff, redirected in front for Garrity, trying to backhand feed. Couldn't get it in time as that one wide of the net back for Paff, who sends it on this high cycle to the half boards. Good effort there by Gabby Paff as the Comets strong arm that one across the Trojans line, forcing it back into the corner and a big hit there by Garrity using some of those two-a-day workouts to his advantage. He'll force that one into the corner, and again, almost a near jump ball with three minutes and 13 seconds to go here in the second period. As the puck squeaks out between the circles, a shot, and that one is going to be held on to by the goaltender Noah Carver, who stopped the clock now with three minutes and four seconds to go. And for Tammy Burris Gary watching from Lancaster, Ohio, that had to be a special goal to watch for Gavin Burris picking up the hat trick tonight on senior night. As the Comets still out from behind the Trojan zone, that one side of the cage, and they will hold on now. As they try to reset the net, And so as play continues out from behind the Trojans net, they'll send it around. Ford's pick back up top of the circle, a cannonading drive. That one got a piece of Carver's stick. Kareen's back into the right wing corner. Still trying to play it as Condi. Up the wing, struggling to get it out. Finally does to neutralize. And that one right back for Gavin Burris. Slides it wide of the net off that backhand attempt. Two minutes and 23 seconds to go. Here in this second period, Trojans ahead 6-0 up on the big board, 32 feet above the ice here at Hobart Arena. As a mid-ice collision there with Smith, knocks the puck back to Andrew Condi. Freshman plays that one aside. Ahead for fellow freshman Smith, cutting through the defense, had his pocket picked at the last minute, and now... The Comets try to break out the other way, catching the Trojans on a momentary line change. Ford's picked back up by Condi, and he'll post up out of the trapezoid on this breakout attempt now on the near wing side. Holding on to it up the wing. Circling it through. Maddie Logan giving chase, so is Path, trying to control it too wide across the Trojans line. As Condi curls his man off the puck, resets top of the slot. Bouncing puck knocked away at the last minute by Smith. Right back for Logan. 
And Sexton at the tail end of his shift is able to get that one all the way down. Now with 119 and counting here in this second period. 6 nothing. Trojans on the lead in senior night if you're just joining us here on Troy, Ohio TV. Glad to have you along for the ride tonight as there's a shot. Pad save with a little help from the blocker by Noah Carver. In his second year as a varsity starter, is able to make that play in 185 feet the other way. That one is going to be an icing call. And so the faceoff remain inside the Trojan zone. And to take it is Lombardo on the stick side of Carver. And they'll play it back against the Dashers. Left wing side. Again, out from behind the net is the captain, Mike McGurk. Second year team captain, first year with the C. Plays that one off the dasher, sends it and gives it away. There's a shot, save made by Carver. And a good effort there by Noah Carver to help out his defenseman. And the faceoff remain inside the Trojans' end. As Lombardo getting last change back off the ice. It'll be Gavin Burris to take the face off against Stick's side. And it's won by the Trojans. Out to center now for Gavin Burris with a head of steam. All alone by himself, Deeks, and he'll hold on. Kept that one to himself a bit and took the hit at the tail end. And now here comes a three on two the other way for the Comets and across the line offside. And a late hit right there. And some more conversations after the whistle there. And it looks like it will indeed be the captain, Mike McGurk. Two minutes in the box for unsportsmanlike conduct for McGurk. And again, we talked about it. The keys to the game presented by Team Gear. Number two key tonight was staying out of the box, and that is but a blessing and a curse for the Trojans so far as the power play unit has been nearly flawless, whereas the penalty kill, also flawless, has shown signs of weaknesses. And so we'll see how this goes. Yet another penalty kill for the Trojans presented by Clopet. America's favorite garage door. And doing the heavy lifting there at the tail end of the period. Six nothing after two periods from the historic Hobart Arena in downtown Troy. As the players will skate into the intermission with the six goal lead against the Mason Comets. But as we know all too often, the third period can be one of those unpredictable ways of ending a hockey game. And so just like that, we will step aside. Six nothing after two periods when we come back. It is third period action from the historic Hobart Arena. You're watching. Troy High School Varsity Hockey on Troy, Ohio TV.
Very much. Fourteen. Wish. Wish them to six ways. Three. Wish. Six. Wish. And what we're doing is we have to sit the drawing from the control. penalty kills correctly, you do them with the other team as the advantage.
And welcome back inside the historic Hobart Arena in downtown Troy, Ohio. You are watching Troy, Ohio TV's exclusive coverage of Ohio High School Athletic Association Varsity Hockey as the Troy Trojans host the Mason Comets from suburban Cincinnati, Ohio. As we get set to begin period number three, I'm JT Zabo. Glad to have everybody along for the ride tonight. As the Trojans get set to begin their final homestand here on home ice inside the historic Hobart Arena. Of course, next Sunday, January 16th, the Trojans will have a THS alumni game as the alumni are back in town to square off against the varsity team. So you will want to make sure you're there for that as that is a free admission hockey game right here inside Hobart Arena, and then right back to business on Saturday night, January 29th, as the Beaver Creek Beavers come to town inside Hobart Arena in a conference battle. We'll have all of those games, including the alumni night, right here, live and on demand on Troy, Ohio TV. As we get set to begin period number three, the Trojans are ahead 6-0 on the big board where it counts. And we are underway for period number three as Cameron Lombardo wastes no time trying to pick a corner. But it was not to be as they'll work that one again. Back out to neutral ice. Comets trying to get some offense going here at the tail end of a Trojan penalty. Short-handed, here's Lombardo by himself, loses the puck and takes a poke from behind. No call as play continues back into the corner. Another minute 21 remaining on that penalty to the captain, Mike McGurk, carrying over from that second period. As play now works it back on the half boards, right wing side. Still trying to dig for it against the yellow kick plate at the bottom of the Dashers. And finally, it squirts free back to the point of Smith. Sends it rink wide. One touch pass by Berghardt into the corner on this low cycle now to Sexton. And from the side, still trying to keep the puck in control and kill off more of this penalty. And a good job the Trojans have done, but here come a four-way tilt at the Trojans' line the other way for the Comets. So they'll force it deep out of the trapezoid, poked away at the last minute by Noah Carver, and that one will careen all the way back inside the Comet zone with now 32 seconds and counting on this Mason power play presented by Clope, the official garage door of the Troy Trojans. Sends it rink wide, one touch pass on this breakout attempt intercepted by Smith, but he's on the wrong side of the red line. And that'll be an icing call against the Trojans now with 13.26 to go. And that stopped the clock with just 16 seconds. They're gonna say no icing as it was an official's mistake. And so the faceoff will remain at center ice. And so we'll do that one again from center. 12 seconds in counting on McGurk's penalty as he was listening to instructions from across the ice from head coach Rick Zabo on exactly where he wants him to go in three seconds as the Trojans Tag up at the line and return to full strength. McGurk's on the ice. He's got Berghardt on the side and D. Back up is Gavin Burris. Burris already got the hat trick tonight, but still wants more after being out of the lineup last week. As there's a blocker save, rebound, bouncing puck out from behind the net, knocked away. As they'll work it back into the far side half boards. Battling up close and personal. 12.41 and counting to go here in this second period as that rink-wide stretch pass out to center. Picked off by McGurk. Now sets up Br Joey Brussel, who works it back into the corner. First time doing battle in that corner since his nasty injury in the preseason. Took him out of the lineup since November. This is first game back, and boy, was it a doozy. He wanted to get back in time for senior night, and that's exactly what he did as Brussels shoots and scores! Welcome back, Joey!
Joey Brussel gets the goal. His first of the season after a long wait. And he gets quite the accolades from the crown on hand tonight as he picks up the goal on senior night. And what a way to do it. As there's a centering feed in front of the blue paint, knocked away at the last second. Garrity getting a helper on that goal as well, and so does Burris. Is Francis not a shot? Loose puck scored! And that'll keep the official scorekeeper busy downstairs. Braden Granger, you can see his fingers are just flying trying to catch up with all these goals and assists happening in a very short period of time as two goals in less than a minute for the Trojans makes this an impressive eight to nothing lead over the Mason Comets already. We'll go downstairs for the call. <laughs> Cooper Sexton gets credit for the goal. Francis Knott also gets an assist on that one, making it 8 0 with 11 14 and counting here in regulation. Trojans ahead 8 0 over the Mason Comets in conference play. This certainly helps the Trojans out in the Southwest Ohio High School Hockey League standings as the puck finally makes it all the way down inside Trojan territory. Wrapped around the Dashers and played on the half boards. Still trying to control. Gabby Paff is able to backhand that one out to center ice. Regrouping at the red stripe of the Comets. And over the Trojans line. Breaking a shot and that one high but wide. Stick side off the end boards. Right back into the right wing corner for Paff. She takes the hit but gets it around. And again from the slot. Blocked pass by Lombardo. Rebound attempt knocked away by the goaltender, Noah Carver, at the last minute, and this one's going to be sent all the way down. And then that'll be an icing call with 10-19 to go here in this third period. I mean, we talked about the keys to the game, good goaltending and firing on all cylinders. You can check both of those off pretty much the entire hockey game. And that was really what the Trojans were looking for coming into tonight's game. Looking at those keys presented by Team Gear, the official spirit store of Troy Trojans hockey. Visit them now at teamgear.com. Here's a three on one the other way for the Trojans and a spin of Rama. Rebound, top shelf scores! There's a drill they've done in practice where the forward line will go down and everybody has to touch the puck before they can score. And that was exactly what we saw right there, a true line effort. As we'll go downstairs to the official call from Roger Mumpower, but a good effort there to make it a 9 nothing hockey game with under 10 minutes now to go here in regulation. As we await word from Roger Mumpower. Joey Brussel getting credit for his second goal of the season. And second goal this period is Brady Smith and Crawford getting credits for assists as well as that one carried over by Garrity and another shot right on by Joey Brussel. He might have a hat trick himself on senior night, the second such tonight. As one hat trick already in the books for that man right there. Gavin Burris knocked off and a delayed penalty coming. And a power play coming to the Trojans. Nine fourteen to go here in regulation, a tripping call. On number 11 for the Comets. 
Puts the Trojans once again on the AccuTool power play. And the Trojans And so timeout on the ice. The Comets decided to use their one timeout. Head coach Rick Zabo having a chat with his squad as well. Firmly in the lead in this one. The Comets trying to get on the board. And mount a, some sort of offensive response to see what they can do. And so off this face-off down low, picked up by Gabby Paschel. Diffs it off to the point. As that one for Maddie Logan. Two points already, two assists for Maddie Logan. As that one worked it all the way down, played by Noah Carver in front of his net. Left off for Berghardt. Here's Colin Berghardt on the breakout attempt. He'll skate it himself across the line. Gets picked off the puck and forces it back into the right wing corner. As Lombardo awaits on the near side on this low cycle, 125 remaining on the Trojans' power play, brought to you by AccuTool. That one held on at the line by McGurk. Good effort right there as they'll force it back down low into the corner. Like to say hi to my family watching at home here in Troy on Troy, Ohio TV. Like to say hi to Jamie, Monica, as well as. John Wyatt, Lily Grace, Riley, Rhino, and Jamie cheering on the Trojans tonight. Thanks for tuning in on the official home of Troy Trojans Hockey as they'll work it back around. Off the Dashers and from behind the net, Trojans firmly in control of this hockey game tonight as icing signaled. And icing is the signal. And so they'll bring that one all the way back down low. Inside the Trojans' end. And again, the Trojans back at home next Sunday at a 545 faceoff as the THS alumni are back in town as the alumni team will square off against the existing Trojans team. That'll be a lot of fun. You'll want to join us for that next weekend right here at Hobart Arena. Free admission for that game as well. If you can't make it or you're an alumni out of town that just can't get plane tickets in time. We'll have that game for you right here on Troy, Ohio TV, presented by Team Gear. Here's Cooper Sexton meanders across the line, and a drive is stopped down low. And held on by the Comets. 15 seconds to go on the Trojans' man advantage, presented by AccuTool Tool and Die, the official precision manufacturer of Troy Trojans hockey. Always nice when the family tunes in. As well as everyone that we've heard from around the world supporting Troy Trojans Athletics. Right here on Troy, Ohio TV, a scramble in front of the net as Ian Francis not nearly had a piece of it. Already one goal already as we return to even strength hockey. Linesman waves off the icing call just at the last moment. 7.05 to go here in this third and final period of regulation. As Gavin Burris with the puck, hands it back off for Cooper Sexton. Burris already with a hat trick. You can tell he was hungry after being out of the lineup last weekend. Gets it back. A saucer pass, but nobody was home. Couldn't get it on his tape. And so rushing in was Brady Smith on this low cycle right wing side. Out from behind the net. Sets it off for Burris. Right back for Smith between the circles. Couldn't get the shot. Rebound off the side of the cage. Back into the corner. 
Couldn't get it on that breakout attempt, and so the Trojans will retreat all the way back inside their own zone. That was 6-22 and counting in this third period. 9-0, Troy in the lead if you're just joining us or watching on demand. Trojans having a convincing conference show tonight. As Smith will fire that one wide left off the end boards. Trojans get fresh legs out on the ice as Maddie Logan keeps it in momentarily as the senior retreats out with the puck to neutral territory. Here's a one-touch pass off a skate leg. Rebound, save made. Pad save that time by Noah Carver. Who played back into the near side. Deflected out in front of the net. Didn't get a piece of the blue paint. As that one cannot be contained on the near side point. And so the bouncing puck makes it all the way back inside Mason territory. Off the dashers and a head out through center ice. Now a two on two across the Trojans line. In on side. Picks the corner off the side of the twine. Rebound. Wrap around attempt. Nobody was there. And finally it's knocked away. All the way down. And a good effort there by a scrambling and tired Troy Trojans hockey team in front of their own net. Five minutes and 17 seconds to go. Here in regulation, 18 to 12, the shots on goal. In favor of the Trojans who also have that nine nothing lead. And so right off the draw inside the Trojans end. Five minutes and nine seconds to go here in the third. Trojans taking their time on this breakout attempt. Knocked out off the short glass, nearly getting a piece of the photographer, but the Comets are able to hold it in. On the line and inside, that one high, just above the glove, and that one deflected off the high glass to the left wing side. At the point, Trojans try to kick it over the line and finally do, but icing signaled. And that one's going to go down for an icing call. Four minutes and 43 seconds to go. And of course, if you just caught the tail end of this hockey game, you can re-watch it on demand on Facebook and YouTube. Just search Troy Ohio TV. Be sure to like us on Facebook and Instagram as well. As they'll bring the puck off the side of the cage. That one's going to be knocked off, and they're going to say... Faceoff's going to remain inside the Trojans' end as the net was kicked off the peg. Four minutes and 30 seconds to go. Here in the third period, of course, coming up after the hockey game, there is public skating. And still plenty of time to head to the rink if you wanted to lace on the skates after what will almost certainly be a convincing Trojan victory here on home ice on a Saturday night. Along the banks of the Great Miami River and a big rocking hit there on Smith. Draws the delayed penalty against the Comets and they are going to touch it up. And the Mason bench not pleased with that call one bit. The referee Ty Wilkinson is going to say it's a head contact penalty. And so with four minutes and 13 seconds to go here in regulation, the official is getting an explanation with the Comets bench. And so the faceoff stays inside the Comet zone. And that one's one away. Loose puck on the side of the cage. Finally picked back up by Francis Knott. Still battling for it along the dashers. One minute and 54 seconds now to go on this Trojan power play. Once again brought to you by our good friends at Precision Manufacturing and Tool. As they'll work it around the dashers. 9-0, Trojans in the lead in this one, firmly strapped into the driver's seat. 
Three minutes and 45 seconds in counting here in regulation. As the Comets still trying to muster some offense shorthanded, three wide across the Trojans line. As they'll battle for it down low into the slot, some rough housing after the play, but no harm, no foul as the Trojans will bring this one up ice. Still on the power play, brought to you by AccuTool. And so with 104 to go here in this power play to the Trojans. That one finally won again. Back now for Matty Logan, who had a stellar performance tonight. Two assists on the game. A high stick's going to be waved off right back to... That shot by Berghart, Paff in the trapezoid. Battling for it down low. Still trying to control the puck out of the corner. Under three minutes now to go here in regulation. As icing's going to be waved off, it's the captain, Mike McGurk. Back to get it on this breakout attempt for the Trojans. Rink wide, bouncing puck. We've seen that a lot tonight. A very lively biscuit as the Trojans going to be... Offsides momentarily, but tag up at the line as Paff sends that one again. And 12 and 15 going at it each other. And Lombardo just had about enough of that. And it should be matching minors. As Lombardo getting accolades from the student section in section 27 for standing up for his team. Nonetheless, one of those instances where maybe it was best to just walk away. But you could kind of see that festering between the two of them. And so it stays a matching pair of minors for those two particular minors as the Trojans remain on the power play for the next 11 seconds. 2.20 to go in regulation in this 9-0 Trojans-led hockey game. As we return to full strength, those two will stay in the box for nearly the rest of this hockey game. And so the icing will bring the faceoff all the way back inside the Trojan zone. And so the faceoff will be on the glove side of Carver inside Trojan territory. And that one's controlled by Berghardt, who takes the hit out of the trapezoid. Still battling for it down low out of the net. Gets beat, loose puck, had it on his skate, saved! And Noah Carver had it the whole way. And there are some Mason Comets that wish they could have that play back. As Joey Brussel in the box for a cross-checking penalty with under two minutes to go and things getting a little rough, especially after the whistle. But an empty net, Carver hadn't reset, and the Comets just couldn't put it on their stick to fire it in the net. And probably the closest call of the night by far. Here's Cooper Sexton. Across the line, drops it back for Smith. Gets head off the puck, but Berghardt picks it back up. As that one knocked back into the far corner. 90 seconds to go in regulation as the Comets now, shorthanded, or excuse me, on the power play. Worked that one across the Trojans line. Bouncing puck again the other way. 127 to go. On the Trojans penalty to Joey Brussel, 116 in counting in regulation. 
Nine nothing on the scoreboard where it counts, and the Trojans are just going to try and wind this clock down the best they can as that one touched up. As we approach the one minute mark of regulation, one minute to go. Trojans will just settle into penalty kill mode here as they'll work it again. This penalty kill brought to you by Clope, America's favorite garage doors, but here come the Comets the other way, blowing a tire at the line. And Troy is able to fire that one the length of the ice with 37 seconds and counting. Play down from behind the net with Sexton giving chase. Good example of the angle drill right there for Cooper Sexton as that one knocked away at the red stripe, finally touched up by the Comets. And a big hit there, knocks the puck loose, and around the high glass it goes with 20 seconds and counting. In front of the penalty box and a big open ice check. Delayed penalty. And so it looks like the Trojans are going to go back into the box with 13.1 seconds to go. And so a two-man advantage to end this hockey game for the Comets. And if nothing else, it'll make for an interesting finish. 13.1 seconds on the clock. Face off into Trojans' end. And they'll win it back. And a big open ice check right there. Knocks it loose with three seconds to go. Makes it all the way down. And so at the end of regulation, a 9 nothing final. As the team shake their hands at center ice in a show of sportsmanship, according to OHSAA policy, your final score inside the historic Hobart Arena in downtown Troy, the Troy Trojans 9, the Mason Comets no score. Trojans advance in league play with an excellent effort on the ice and excellent goaltending as part of senior night, of course, tonight. Honored our seniors, Mike McGurk, team captain for the second season in a row, as well as Matty Logan, who picked up two assists on tonight's game, as well, and the return of Joey Brussel, who had been out of the lineup since November with an upper body injury, came back and scored two goals for the Trojans' win tonight. Of course, the Trojans back at home next Sunday at 545 against the alumni squad. That is a free admission game. We'll have that for you right here. And then back to work against the Beaver Creek Beavers on Saturday night, January 29th at 5 o'clock. For our entire crew here at Hobart Arena, for John Wyatt, Lily Grace, Riley, Rhino, Dorothy, Mike, Janice, and the crew here at Hobart Arena, I'm J.T. Zabo. For Troy, Ohio TV, this has been a presentation. Copyright 2022. Good night, everybody, from Hobart Arena.